Hello everyone. So today we launched our second report on open innovation. Open innovation plays a key role in bringing the stakeholders together and this uh, topic has been the uh, key buzzword uh, in among the corporates, uh, startups and government and of course investors and uh, academia stakeholders. Now the key agenda, though this is this is NASCOM's second report, last year we started this research journey on open innovation with the objective of making uh, you know ecosystem understand what is open innovation all about. We try to understand the challenges also. This year, to scale the ecosystem, this open innovation ecosystem faster, we dwelt at a, uh, a level further to understand the potential and impact of this open innovation on the stakeholders. Uh, also, in this report, the key USP is that we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, put down a new matrix for measuring the success of these innovation programs because what we feel that uh, currently the innovation is not getting measured properly and that's why we laid down a matrix uh, on NPS, Net Promoter Score and a couple of other points to uh, help ecosystem stakeholders to understand that how to measure these uh, uh, properly or on, you know, uh, your uh, innovation programs. So this year, we did this report in partnership with Avastra and Global. So I have with me uh, Akshay Khanna, who is a managing partner with uh, Avastra and Global. Akshay, welcome to the chat. Thank you. So uh, we'll just uh, talk a bit on the uh, report. So we want to understand from you, uh, Akshay, what kind of uh, impact we are covering in this report, the how open innovation is impacting corporates, uh, startups, and academia. And sure. No, like you mentioned, I think it's a very important topic, um, very timely. Um, you know, innovation is at the forefront for all major organizations, whether, you know, you look at global organizations, organizations in Fortune 500, 2000 mm. and so on. So it was really great to partner with NASCOM um, as Avasant on this, um, as we partnered in the past on quantum and blockchain. I think this was a logical next step to do on how we, various technologies uh, and innovation can play a role. So um, I think Speaking in terms of impact, um, the you know in our role as Avasan, we work with a lot of Fortune 500, Global 2000 organizations, and what we see with them is this constant battle between them trying to do cost optimization and them trying to do innovation. Mm. And in in order to drive innovation, they need to get creative. They need to get you know innovative in terms of you know trying out new models. And that's I think exactly where open innovation fits in. It provides a very nice rubric for them to collaborate with the ecosystem at large, mm -hmm. whether it's startups, whether it's academia, whether it's investor community, whether it's incubators, accelerators, and so on. So if I talk about uh, the the uh, corporations or you know the the large enterprises first. Um, like I said, their constant challenge is, you know, how do you balance innovation and cost optimization? Uh, how do you drive transformation? So what we've seen, as and, and as as the study shows, uh, they can see, you know, benefits all around. So whether it's coming, you know, to launching new products faster, yeah. whether it's coming uh, to driving efficiency in their existing operations because they're able to bring in technology and bring in innovation to to drive efficiency and improvement in their existing processes, whether it's doing cost takeout and so on. And as much as uh, nearly, I think, four out of five corporations have come back saying that, you know, this open innovation really helps them achieve one or more of these objectives. And I think that's tremendously powerful because it gives them a way to, to drive, uh, you know, uh, improvements in their, their setups. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, when we look at startups, um, it's, it's, I think, even equally, if not more beneficial mm -hmm. for startups because what it does uh, for startups when they're collaborating with academia and corporations here is it gives them access to solving real world problems, problems that really matter for these organizations. And, and we see tremendous benefit for them to test their technologies, mm -hmm. drive them to market, uh, launch them quickly. And again, I think over 80% of startups that we've kind of seen, surveyed here, have reported an increase in their revenue because they mm -hmm. get direct access to you know, selling to these, these te their technologies or um, uh, innovation. Uh, to the larger corporates, and then also subsequently increase in their valuation, giving them more access to funds, and then driving this virtuous cycle of innovation. Mm. So I think all in all, if I look at the two major constituents, both on the, the large corporations as well as the startups, I think there's tremendous benefit. And of course, it helps uh, the broader ecosystem has a role to play. I think academia has a role to play. Universities have a lot of 
um, you know, capacity, especially in India, where we have, you know, uh, you know, millions of PhD hours, you know, available for mm -hmm. for this um, for this activity, whether it's incubators, accelerators, and of course, industry bodies and, and the government policy making. So, I think uh, there's there's a lot of benefit for all the stakeholders to drive the innovation agenda forward. Absolutely, and that's the impact and benefit that we are trying to highlight in the report, and uh, the impact is visible, and we have to make people understand that yes, there is an impact. And uh, that's when the, my next question lies in, so impact is visible, right? But to scale the ecosystem, we have to show the stakeholder the potential that lies with yeah. the open innovation ecosystem. So what are the potential that we have highlighted in the report? Well, I, I think, I mean, truly from an India perspective, I think the, just this unlimited potential, mm -hmm. right? Um, today, uh, we, we are in top five in terms of GDP. But when it comes to the Global Innovation Index, um, despite of having a very deep technical you know skill base you know uh, uh, large demographic which is you know adapted technologies different emerging technologies whether it's ai or quantum or whatever else we're still lagging at kind of number 30 in mm -hmm. global innovation index uh, or 40 um, and i think there's a lot of um, uh, what this report i think is really trying to highlight bringing in the best you know models emerging models both within india as well as from from outside india on how we can be in the top 10 by 2030, right? And I think that's the big vision that we need to be driving towards, both mm -hmm. from a policy making perspective as well as the enabling ecosystem perspective. You know, coming down, I think, you know, uh, you know from that kind of big goal that I think we've, we've outlined in this report, working together with you, is also, you know, there are some very tangible benefits to these organizations. We've seen uh, for larger corporations, there's almost 1.25x impact in terms of bringing their products faster to market. For a large corporation which is, you know, working on, um, you know, global scale problems and so on, something like that is huge, right? If they're able to bring their product to the market a lot sooner, you know, even a couple of months sooner, I think that allows them significant competitive mm -hmm. advantage. So it's a very hard dollar value uh, impact on that. I think it's similar on uh, startups. I think within three years, they see a lot of impact because their their technologies are getting commercialized sooner especially more so important for deep tech i think as we've seen uh, because they need commercialization sooner in their no. cycle rather than you know waiting out a 10 you know five seven eight ten years high cycle so i think there's a lot of potential in terms of achieving those objectives um, and then like i said i think it creates that virtual cycle of of innovation mm -hmm. um, kind of furthering you know future growth and then bringing in more entrepreneurs mm -hmm. into it and then creating that uh, cycle great point Akshay. and then in a nutshell open innovation is a way to you know uh, grow grow not only in terms of customer base revenue valuation that anybody will get it but to grow effectively efficiently and faster and that has been the uh, you know the agenda of most of the companies and startups and academia because in a in a dynamic environment that we are living in, we are global macroeconomic uh, economic factors are hitting us a lot, and that ways uh, growing faster, economical, effective, and uh, efficiently is the key to success your to take your business to new heights. I think there are a lot more insights that we have covered in the report. Please, uh, please go and download the report from NASCOM website and community, and keep reading. Thank you. Thank you.